Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, and I'm going to try to get one more of these in. And for those of you who have been following me for uh, any amount of time, you know that my most inspirational time is just before nap time. Uh, that's because God knows uh, how I love to take a nap. And so he often drops something right into my spirit. Just about the time for me when it's time for me to take a nap, knowing that I will not, I can't, I can't rest until I, I get it out. So that's a me and God thing. So uh, I'm going to try to get this out so I can get this nap in. We're talking about until the day. Until the day. And the day that we are referring to is not just any day. It's, it's the day. It's the day in which this generation has been prepared for. It's, it's the day in, in which this we say by the word of the Lord. That there is coming a day on this planet that we, that the, a day when the dead in Christ will rise first. Now, you know, that's a day like, in that, that, that's an extraordinary day. There will come a day when the dead in Christ will rise, rise first. And then some folks that are alive on earth, walking around, doing their thing, making YouTube videos, whatever, those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's the day. Until that day. We've been thinking about uh, allowing four questions to, to guide our thinking about that day. Let me get, let's see my, my notes down here. And those four questions are... Looking at Noah, because Noah is the guy. Uh, he is to his day what we are to our day. He's the only one that had the connection, the relationship uh, with God to know what time it was, what to do, when to do it, how to do it. Noah knew that. And in this generation, God has called uh, the body of Christ. And so there is one body, just like there was one somebody in Noah's day, there is one body. There is the body of Christ, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one body. And, and, and Jesus Christ is the head of that one body. And he communicates every, he communicates everything that he is going to do on earth as it is in heaven through the relationship that his body has with him. So what did, Noah, what did Noah know, and when did he know it, and how did he know it, and why did he know it? And this why I am submitting to you is the Amos 3-7. God will do nothing. God would do nothing unless he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. So in Noah's generation, Noah had finally come to uh, the end. And, 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 and Noah, Noah lived, and he would have known Enoch, who walked with God. And then God took him. He would have known Adam, and he would have known uh, Methuselah, uh, Methuselah's funeral was just a few days before God told Noah it's time to enter into the ark. But knowing all of these men could not have clued him in to what God had planned for the last day of his generation. So let's look at this again. Genesis chapter 6. And as my brother, good brother James would say, help us, Holy Spirit. 
The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, then the Lord said, you see, he hadn't started talking to Noah yet. So when the Lord said what he said, uh, he wasn't talking to Noah. Uh, and then the Lord saw, verse 5, that the wickedness of man was great on the earth and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And in verse 7, we see the Lord said, I'm going to blot out man whom I have created. From the face of the land, from man to animals to creeping things and to birds of the sky, I am sorry that I have made them. It's global dis destruction. Again, I refer you to Brother James Smith. You want to find out more about that. But the Bible says in verse 8, But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. And because Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord, then God would start talking directly to Noah, informing him as to what he had planned up until the last day of that generation. In verse 9, it says, these are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, rightly related to God, blameless in his generation. In his generations, while other men were, were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, while others' men only heart was thinking about wickedness, Noah's heart was perhaps guided and informed by what he had heard from his great, great, great grandfather Adam and from his grandfather Lamech and from his great grandfather, great, great grandfather Methuselah. Uh, but now God was saying, I'm going to communicate, I'm going to communicate with you directly because you found favor, because there is a relationship there, because there is intimacy, because we're walking together. And when we walk together, then we can talk together. So God started talking to Noah in verse 13. Then God said to Noah, you see, before God, it just said, and the Lord said, and the Lord saw. But when he found a man that he could talk to, that he could talk with, that he could walk with, the Lord said to Noah, this is what I want you to do. Verse 15, make for yourself. And this is how I want you to make it. And and, and put a window in it, and, and this is what I'm going to do and why I'm going to do it and when I'm going to do it. And he included Noah in on all of that. Why? Because Noah was walking with God. And because Noah was walking with God, Noah was talking with God. And because Noah was, was, was walking with God, God would talk to Noah. Tell him that the end of all flesh was coming. And then verse chapter 7 and verse 1 says, And then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark. As it was in the days of Noah. See, some of, some of, some of those comments that are being left on my channel, are, the people were hating on me because I believe that I can know that we can know that we will know that the day of his coming, the day of his soon appearing, the day when he 
uh, cause us up to meet him in the cloud. That day will not shock us. That day will not surprise us. But as it was in the days of Noah, when God found favor because of his grace and his mercy to call a man to himself and to uh, prepare that man to participate with him and start talking to that man and God would talk to that man and talk him through his plan right up until this day when God, the Lord said to Noah, enter the ark. Those are pretty clear uh, instructions. That, that's, that's, that's pretty plain right there. Just enter the ark. Time to go in. When? Not tomorrow. It's time to go. Time to enter. Not a month from now. Not a year from now. I'm not going to play uh, guess when to go in with you. You did all that I've commanded you to do. You stayed in the right relationship with me. And now I am going to tell you it's time to go in. You and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this generation. There is one household that is righteous before God in this generation. It's not in that household, it's, it's not its own righteousness. Paul, when he was writing to Timothy, says, But if I am delayed in my coming to you, I want you to uh, uh, know how to handle yourself in the house of God. In, in, in the church of God, which is the house of God, the pillar and ground of the truth. I think that's 1 Timothy 3 and verse 16 or 17 or something. Let me let me go ahead and get that and read that. Uh huh. Yes. Paul said in 1 Timothy verse 3 and verse 14, I am writing these things to you, hoping to come to you shortly. But in case I am delayed, I write so that you may know how one ought to conduct himself in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and support of the truth. So God had one household in the days of Noah, and he, and he instructed that household. He guided that household. He informed that household uh, through Noah. And when the day came for that household to enter the ark, God was clear, God was plain. And as it was in the days of Noah, God will be, has promised to be clear and has promised to be plain when he's promised to point it out to us when we see the signs of approaching, what they are, what they mean. You and all your household. Told him what to take, who to take in the ark. And then the Bible says, God says in verse 4, for after seven more days. Now, Noah didn't have to be a mathematician to understand after one, two, Three, four, five, six. Don't be looking for it to happen on the fourth day, or on the fifth day, or on the third day, after seven days. In the six hundred day, in the six hundred year of Noah's life, verse eleven. In the second month, on the seventeenth day of the month, on the same day, on the day God told him. On the day God informed him was coming. On the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were open and the rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights on the very same day. The day that God warned him about, prepared him for, told him about. On that day, 
as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. No shock, no surprise. Maranatha.